Hello and welcome along to Off the Court with me, Caroline Barker. Use the hashtag Off the Court to get in touch with us. Never fear, Tamsin Greenway is on the way in just a moment. I think she's just changing Casey Jack's nappy. Casey will join us, as will the botanist, the new nickname for Serena Guthrie. We'll find out why a little bit later when Serena joins us. She'll also talk about her netball future. First up, though, there are three wheels on the cog guiding you through the next 20 minutes or so. Not just myself and Tamsin, but we've got a two times Netball World Cup winner, a Commonwealth Games gold medalist. She was part of our team on Sky Netball, at the Netball World Cup in Liverpool. And most importantly of all, she's one impressive human being. Yeah, we've only gone and got Shani Layton with us. I was about to ask you what you've been up to, but actually we can see what you've been up to, not just feeding the cats. Here is a, a little bit of Shani getting the nation Don't worry about looking pretty girls. Chuck that hair oh. in and fun. And here's some equipment. <laughs> yes, <for> Shani. <laughs> what are we starting off with, Wolves? We've got the towel, Shans. Now the towel Do my best. is a long one because there's going to be a bit of body Have you done the towel body. workout yet? Yeah. 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 No, I'm going to add this. Add this to my, my little regime. If, if I can get this one to play ball. Yeah, don't, <laughs> don't do it. Don't do it. It's too much <laughs> like hard work. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen cooking at home with the cats, but that was a little example of, of NetFit, which you've been doing with the Aussie Diamonds. Uh, we've seen you there, Sarah Wall there. One of her ideas to and, and various keep fit cooking with Shani as well, which has gone down a, a hit over here at least. A couple of those recipes I will try. I will try in the future. What else have you been, been doing? Because it's that weird thing for you. Were you partway through the AFL pre-season? Was that about to happen? Was that happening? Where are you in, in terms of everything? Oh, do you know what? I've just been so, so lucky during this time. I'm definitely one of the fortunate ones. So we were lucky enough that we actually had our AFLW season because we play it over our summer, which is your winter. So the season goes from January through till April. So we were cut a few weeks short, but we still got eight games in. So, you know, in comparison to everyone else that does not get to play this year, uh, we did, which was awesome. And so we made our very first final series. I broke my finger. I don't know if you can see this one here. <laughs> I'm not just being rude. Um, and I had to, that was like in the midst of that transition of will we play, will we not play? And I was a bit torn because I was like, I popped it out and the bone was sticking oh. out. <laughs> and... I was kind of like, oh, I actually wouldn't mind if they called it because, like, I don't really want to play with a broken finger this week. But we ended up having our first final series. So I toughed it out and went out and played. And we ended up losing. And it was an elimination final. And so I was kind of like, oh, well, we've lost now anyway. So I don't care <laughs> if anyone else plays on or not. <laughs> Season yeah, over. I like that. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so then that finished up and I thought – Far out. I'm, I'm unemployed, really. Um, there's not much I can do. So on the Monday of finding out about, you know, COVID-19, everything's going on, I went and looked for a supermarket job. So I was like, you know, maybe I could work at Coles. I can't sit still for 10 minutes, so I'm going to need a job somewhere. <laughs> on the Tuesday, I got the call from Sarah Wall saying, Shans, do you want to come in and do this net fit, which has been amazing. And that's been keeping me fit in itself. It's three full days a week from nine till three. We do a skills session, a workout, and a cooking session, which is a workout within itself because I'm that bad. And so <laughs> just pure entertainment value. And then the following day, I got offered a job at a school. So at a private school over here in Melbourne. And so I'm now the head of netball um, at a school. I can't, I don't, I haven't announced it yet, so I can't say what it is yet. But um, hopefully I'm starting that in the next couple of weeks. And we've still got a few TV shows on that I'm on over here as well. So, and I'm also still doing my footy training because, you know, why not? And then before all of that came up, I signed up to a nutrition course. So I'm just like, just doing everything. You and I have spoken previously about um, mental health and the importance of keeping fit and active. Was that very much, were you thinking about that too? Just got to keep lots of things happening, keep a routine going. Yeah, and I'm not very good at it. Like, I'm, as I said before, with my cooking and stuff, I do get very lazy. And I think what I need to remind myself is like action comes before motivation. So I'm like, just get out of the house and go for a run because for three weeks I'm meant to have gone for a run and I didn't. And I just had to give myself a good kick up the butt and drag myself out of the house, even though I was feeling like crap. And then I went and did the run and I felt 
great. Like actually just getting out of the house was so beneficial. And you're right. I think I wasn't going out of the house because I was feeling crappy. But then after giving myself a kick up the butt and just doing it just helped get me into my new routine that you do have to stick to during these times. And, and no one's perfect. No one's going to do it perfect all of the time. But the difference between when I'm feeling good and crap and getting out and getting some fresh air and exercise um, makes makes a huge difference. And I even just went and bought a bike so that if I don't feel like running, it's an easier way to go and do some exercise without exerting as much energy. Shani, we're going to try and, and keep you occupied for the next 15 minutes or so. It's lovely to have you with us here on Off The Court. We're also going to try and persuade you to come back to netball because that's essentially isn't it, Tamsin, what we spent about half an hour trying to do with Serena Guthrie. Let's hear from her now, England's Netball World Cup captain. Serena Guthrie joining us then to talk about gardening, because that's all you seem to be doing on Instagram at the moment. Yeah, I've decided to set myself a task which involves me getting outside every day in the garden. I'm growing stuff. So I've got parsnips, I've got tomatoes, cucumbers, courgettes, runner beans and it's going quite well i'm surprisingly proud of myself and happy with how it's going so i really have like no idea <laughs> to do what you could actually do is that is the finger food for your wedding because that's supposed to be this summer isn't it yeah we've had to kind of cancel the wedding she put it on the weekend of the semi-finals of super league good convenience there to read about <laughs> I know this is selfish, but I'm not playing netball this season. So, you know, I was just going with any kind of day that kind of suited both of us. And then, yeah, when I sent the invites out, all the girls were like, dude, are you serious? And I was like, what? <laughs> I really good time to do it. They're like, mate. It so, yeah, we've had to move it. So it's always cool. And I think actually it definitely suits the netballers a lot better than the previous date, which in hindsight is a good thing because the majority of the people coming to my wedding are netballers. So. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds to me like that's, that's good on three levels. One, you've learned how to garden. Two, all the netballers come. But three, you said this season. Are we thinking then that if the season comes back around about your wedding time or post-wedding, as it were, that you could be fit and eligible and ready to play? Well, technically, I suppose. It's been amazing having this kind of time away from the game, but yeah, I'm obviously starting to think about what my re-entry might look like and things like that. So we'll see. I think in terms of what's happened with the, with the season, every, by the time everything starts up again, if I'm you know, thinking about re-entering, then I think um, it might kind of line up with, with, with me coming back in at quite a nice time. I don't think I completely threw like, anything off the table um, in terms of England and and Super League, you know, for me to kind of step back and reevaluate why, why I still love the game, what am I particularly passionate about, who I am in and around that, it's been really important for me. So coming back into the game physically and playing will definitely look a lot different for me and feel different as well to when I kind of was that young kid eight years ago um, with you and the team that kind of coming in, starting my career. So, you know, I feel very privileged to have been able to have that time, I suppose, to think about it. I think what people forget, and I mention this quite a lot, is that I met you when you were 15. You were just a little kid. You were, you were pipped as the next superstar. You were put in everything. Um, you know, you became the poster girl of England. You, you ended up captain in the side. Like, I think people forget how long you've actually done this for and what that entails. I'm guessing it's quite nice to be at home with, with your two bobs and doing your garden, right? Yeah, it's cool. And, it's like, and I think I feel really fortunate to have been able to kind of found, I suppose, my two bobs during my career because it's really cool to have people to share it with as well and so to have this year just to kind of make a bit of a plan um with the human bob not dog bob he doesn't get much say and yeah and just kind of like we say just think about it and it's, it's gone quick for me being that 15 year old kid kind of bumbling in yeah. um being super weird and loving life <laughs> and just wanting to play netball for england to, to now been one hell of a ride and i never really expected to be stepping out in front of thousands of people as captain at a, a World Cup. If someone had told 15-year-old Serena that, <laughs> coming around. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> table, I think I would have laughed them out of the room. Um, so, yeah, it's been a great journey, but I'm very much looking forward to the kind of the next chapter as well and, and sharing that with, with the two bobs. There's so much more that we want to talk to you about. We've got Sharni Layton on the show as well. Sharni's big thing, and, and I know you'll have seen this uh, last year, she was talking about players to avoid burnout need to have a better calendar around them, need to have this time built in. Having stepped away from it, are you very much an advocate of that now? I think I've always been an advocate for it. I think the one thing 
I've always had um, in my favour is that I've been a younger player around a group of older players. Players like Tamsin and Rachel, Rachel Dunn and the Sarah Baymans and the Pam Cookies. I had such good role models with girls going, Serena, i thinking about this, what about this, you know, what are you going to do after that, well, what are you doing now, what can you meant, you know, and all these certain questions that I think are really important that you need to be asked as an athlete whether you're amateur or professional, because without it, mm. um, I think you can really struggle around the game when you get a bit older. And I just didn't want to be that athlete. And I think I had a great group of girls around me to always encourage me to have that other side of me. Um, so, yeah, I think it's really important whether you play for England or not, whether you're in an art career or a music career, having time away just helps give you space to understand where you need to go next in your life. This week is two years since that Commonwealth gold medal i think i'm getting a sneaky feeling then we could if everything was aligned maybe see you some part of this season hopefully next season and then really challenging for england then to be part of that commonwealth games on home soil yeah maybe god that's looking really far into the future isn't it caroline you know next commonwealth games is in birmingham and i think what a position for an england team to be in a pretty motivational situation to be in as well like you know you want to go out there and obviously win a medal and get into a final but it, like you know defending your own your own medal on home soil in Birmingham 2022 is pretty uh yes yeah, so it's food for thought isn't it so um I think yeah there's, there's going to be a lot of girls putting their hands up for that for, for a place in that Commonwealth Games and I think it's going to be probably one of the toughest selections ever actually. Serena we're going to let you go although I think Tamsin any words of wisdom for Serena before you let her go? Uh, no, that plant is doing much better in the background than mine are, so um, I've got no <laughs> words of wisdom. I think I need to be taught now by, by the botanist in the corner over there. <laughs> Look at my new nickname, the botanist. I like it. I like it. Oh. See, look, there is reason enough to go to the Commonwealth with England or at least to come back and play netball because that is getting a run out <laughs> next time we do commentary. <laughs> oh, good to talk to both of you. You and too. You. Serena, oh. thank you for coming on the show. Thank you. Take care. Chatting with Serena Guthrie then. Um, Shani, I know we try and find a little bit of hope in anything when it comes to Serena, because we want to see her back on the netball court then. But, but maybe, maybe we could persuade her to come back. If not this season, then and clearly she'd be the first. Would she be the first on your list for England if, if they're going into a Commonwealth Games? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I always go back to that 2014 Commonwealth Games where I knew that if I could get under her skin and get her off her game, then I could really unbalance England because she's that ferocious player that will go and go and go and you can have all the best players in the world you can have the best starting seven but if you don't have that player that can just push through and grind and it's hard to say what it is because it's not uh, it is a skill but not a netball skill as such but to be able to change momentum and get an intercept at that dying moment when your team needs it or the momentum shifting towards the other side. Serena Guthrie is always the one to get that intercept, to get them back on, you know, the winning side. And so I think um, if she's not in that England team, there's always a massive hole there. But, you know, as we've seen over the last couple of years with all of the top countries, um, with a lot of retirees, et cetera, we've had the ability to see other players come in and step up but she would definitely be one that's going to go down with the times for England that's for sure. In terms of that's that's the interesting point now I mentioned mm-hmm. before we went to the interview of course she was the Netball World Cup captain Nat Haythornthwaite has now moved into that role too and you can't see her leaving that role would that actually benefit Serena if she was to come back to the England team? Yeah well I think um, the captaincy is quite an interesting one Shani touched on it about, about Serena I like to just call them winners and you can't really be just, you know, that they're just born that way. And Serena is one of those players. I've known her since she was 15 and, and she, she always had that capability on court. I think given her the captaincy, um, it was probably needed to happen at that time. But I, I actually think if she does come back in, leaving someone like Nat in charge would be really beneficial for Serena because she has so, if she can just concentrate, she's got that temperament that you can actually wind her up. And that is probably probably the only weakness of her game. Um, and now sometimes that pays off and sometimes it doesn't. So to take her out of that captaincy role and actually just give her the opportunity to be that winner, to be that superstar and mm-hmm. have sort of like the calming influence of Nat. It's all about you making up your squad and your culture, who's your coach and um, what they want to get out of the team. And I think we're seeing that across the board. Um, the best captain for me is someone like Laura Langman that has it all, that has the calm temperament, mm-hmm. but also the winning skills and also the ability to uplift. Now that works for her group, whether it will work for the next group coming through, who knows? So it, it will really depend on 
sort of how England rebuild this new culture under Jess Selby. Um, but I don't think it will be a bad thing if Serena doesn't come, if she chooses to come back in, obviously, and then if she isn't the captain. And um, that's something across the board for all those top teams. Who your captain is um, can, is really influential when it comes to the key games. We used to say this about you, Shani, that you kind of, before you even went out onto court, your, your presence maybe would strike fear in, in the other team. I wonder those great captains that you've played with and that you've played against, who's kind of resonated with you and had that, that same level of respect before they're even on court? For me, um, well, my very first ANZ team from back in the day was you know, the Adelaide Thunderbirds and Natalie Von Birdo, who was also the Australian captain, was my captain at the time. And she was very similar to a Laura Langman where she just had it all. She had the ability to read the play and pull in the winning intercepts when it mattered. Um, the ability to give that pass that you would know go 100% through for the winning match, you know, the winning point of the game. Um, but she was also just really calm. Whereas I think me and Serena have a very similar personality that we get <laughs> intercepts because we're fiery, but because we're fiery, people can prod us and also put us put us off our game. And I completely agree just going off for a bit with what you said, Tamsin, around Serena, because when you allow players like us to just focus on our game and not worry about everyone else, then we can do what we do best, which is win ball and win ball for the team, which is its own leadership trait. But when you've got to concentrate on everyone else out on the court and the bench and all the rest of it, it takes away from a fiery player's game. Whereas your Nat Von Birdos, your Laura Langman, who's definitely by far one of the best captains. Um, she's never been a captain in a team that I've been in, but I have played with her and she set up the ball for me every single time selflessly. And that is also what such a great leader does. Um, Laura Geitz with the Australian Diamonds because she was that steely, just always got the ball back at the right times, but could change the momentum and bring plays in and out of the game. And um, Kim Green as well. So I've been really fortunate to be surrounded by phenomenal leaders my whole career. But the one thing about every single one of them is that they know who they are off the netball court. So, you know, they might be strong um, on the court, but they're stronger off the court. Whereas when you get people that are just strong within the game, but don't actually know who they are, that's when their leadership skills lack with it because they don't have the great oh. communication skills to get the most out of a team. I think Casey then was making his, his case <laughs> to be a <laughs> yes. leader. He gave me a quick crack. He was showing me who the leader is in this household. Yeah. Too right. <laughs> Too right. When you look, we're going to a little bit later, look at some of the, the young players. Netball Draft Central have named their, their top young players coming through. Who do you, you, both of you look at now and think they'll be future leaders? And I guess Nat Haythornthwaite, I'm going to answer my own question, is already that young player who has that maturity coming through. Tamsin? Yeah, I think um, Nat's a great one. I, I reckon Beth Cobden will grow into a role as well. I, I think it's more the dynamics off the court for me now. I think um, there's a lot of youngsters coming through. If you look at the, the Kiwi side, they're bringing through the youngsters with players like Maya Wilson, um, uh, poi uh, players like that so it's it's going to be about what Shawnee's talking about about how they develop off the court I'm so proud of what that Haythorn Thwaites done because she's grown that side of her game you know when she came in at Wasps it was something we talked a lot about because she is a winner she's a leader um, and she's got the right temperament to do that across the board with the squad as well where it doesn't affect her game so I'm, I'm really pleased with her I think Beth Cobden's definitely got those skills as well to, to take that England squad forward I'll be interested to see what Shani thinks of the Australian side because obviously Bass has been doing it for a while I'm not actually a big fan of a shooter being a captain um, right. I, well I think they have enough to deal with without doing that lead, leadership role I also think many of the shooters I've worked with um, their personality off the court isn't necessarily the kind of um, leadership you need when you're in a changing rooms and you need someone to fire you up and get you going. Most of the shooters I've worked with aren't that kind of player. Um, yeah. I don't know Caitlin, so I don't know what, what her temperament is like off the court. But I, I think they have a huge responsibility in that on their own. And I also think it's hard to get the message across the court when you're in a shooting position. So I'll be intrigued to see who, who Shani thinks coming through the Australian ranks is going to be the next best thing there. Well, I still think, I know Lizzie Watson's been coming through as the vice captain, um, and I just think that she's absolutely the right person for that role to be able to step up into that <laughs> captaincy role. And I completely agree, Tams. And like, you look at someone like a Caitlin Bassett, and she has all the experience in the world. You know, she's got over a hundred test caps now, which is phenomenal. But you're right. You look at all the even the you know the funny memes on Facebook, which are funny, but at the same time, 
each position has a personality. And when you put those personalities out there, majority of people in those positions can actually relate, which is quite funny that people are drawn to, you know, the more quieter achievers do end up going up the front end, whereas the louder, the boisterous, the defenders. And funnily enough, it's very similar in AFL women's over here as well. The personalities of the forwards are that quieter compared to the back end who are the loud, the boisterous, because you really need um, a defender to all the defenders to rally together to be able to shut down in a, a front end. Whereas you're right, the attackers need to concentrate on what they're doing with their own partnership. They can't be worried about the defence end and what's going down there because they've got enough on their plate. Whereas the defenders or someone in the mid court can actually see the whole picture and what's going on and probably do have a bigger perspective off the court of what's going on with players as well, um, if the shooting end is more quieter. Whereas Lizzie Watson has that quiet temperament, um, but she still gets the job done. She's still a really hard worker. Her work ethic, I think, would motivate a lot of people. But, you know, when we're talking about Matt Hathenthwaite and Lizzie Watson, they're not the perfect leader yet. And that's okay. And I think we need to put these girls in a position where they are the captain or the vice captain and put people around them that are willing to grow because I think gone is the day of your solo captain. And, you know, in the Australian Diamonds, we focus on all 12 players being a better captain than the opposition's captain, full stop. And so, you know, when Laura Geitz came into that captaining position back in 2012, 2013, I remember how much pressure was on her. We were the exact same age. So she was only, you know, 24, 25 at the time. And she's come into that role and we got spanked by New Zealand in our very first test. And, you know, and that was the best learning lesson that she could have had. And we all supported her. I supported her as a less experienced player. And Bianca Chatfield supported her as a more experienced player um, with some of her leadership skills. And then she developed as her own captain over time, but she wasn't that captain when she was first put in there. So I think you want to keep someone as a nat, as a captain, and if you were to bring a Serena back in so that she can develop as a long-term leader for the English Roses, which will be really positive. And that's who we, I believe, I think that's what the Australian Diamonds need now because I don't know how much longer Caitlin Bassett is going to be around for, but someone like a Lizzie Watson that just, you know, takes the ball by the horns, wants to create really great change, um, obviously with the Diamonds not having a successful period over the last two years. And I believe that she's the one that can do that. We got all this way into it and uh, we just mentioned how unsuccessful the Australian Diamonds are. The number one team in the world, but didn't they lose the Commonwealth Games? I think we celebrated that again this week, no. two years past. You did. I, I've seen you know, that go viral on Twitter you know, and I'm pretty you know what, sure. Shani, uh, so many Aussies are going, there's no netball to watch, there's nothing here. And then yesterday, literally the whole of England watched the Commonwealth Games final again from 2018. And it took, it was so hard for me not to tweet going, Come on, Aussies. There's a, there's a great game on YouTube if you want to catch up. <laughs> yeah, you can because we'll just put all of our games up from the rest of history. Oh, yeah, I, think yeah. we're losing, I think we're losing your line now. I think we are. Yeah. <laughs> Shawnee Leighton. Oh, I play that, um, that game from 2014, Commonwealth Games, where we knocked you out of the top oh, contention. I, I don't even remember that. No, T Tamsin and I were singing <laughs> in the crowd at that stage. I think we've gone a bit do lally having watched every yeah. single game back to back to back. Uh, you are watching Off the Court, Shawnee Leighton. I guess this week with Tamsin Greenway, of course. Shani, whilst we've got you, let's talk about the defensive end then. Um, clearly compensating, as we've said, uh, by being loud and brash, everything that you want from, from defenders. Tamsin, what makes a, a great defender in your mind? And go on, embarrass Shani. Why is, why is Shani a great defender? We've got some clips of Shani, actually, that we picked out, some we made earlier. What I like in a defender is the ability to come through and take the ball. I think we've got a lot of players out there that can do a job to set things up, but it's the, it's the players that intercept and read the game. Um, the clips we're showing of Shani now, her ability to come off the body, which is actually quite an unusual trait in an Australian side. And I, I think it's when they were very successful. Her speed to come around and off and take clean ball and not be ridiculously tight the whole time. Um, but that ability to come on and off and challenge, step around. But it, she can do that, obviously, because she was so quick and so athletic, which is, which is key. You've got to find the strengths in your game. But I think it was crucial. And actually looking back at those clips when Shani was playing, Aussie were able to set up a different style, so they were able to come off a little bit more, they were able to go for flyers, they were doing things slightly differently. I think they've really lost that since Shani stepped away. Um, 
because I think the game needs both now. You need to be able to do a tight man on job. You also need to come off and be loose as well. And the best defenders can switch between both. Shani, uh, clearly you'd echo all of that. <laughs> but who, who do you look at now on, on the world scene and think, that's the player like me and, and that's, that's the best in the world? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I think each player is so individual in their own way and they bring something different to the game. Um, and you can never really compare I love it like when Courtney Bruce is on like she's on like she can come out and she can fly but for me and this is tough but it's just not consistent enough and when the game gets tough is when she goes quiet whereas I was generally quiet during the game but when it got tough was when I backed myself in to go for a ball and I think that comes down to your no, not just your ability, but your perception of the game and when you need to attack and like you were saying, Tans, and when you need to stay off. And, no, I wasn't always like that. I had to learn that over years and years of practice of, oh, that was the wrong time or, oh, I just lost this game. Yes, Johnny, I played very early on when you were playing wing defence and trust me, you were very tight on during that game. <laughs> yeah, well, because wing defence, I had no idea what I was doing. So <laughs> that's all that I could do. I'm pretty sure I was just grabbing your arm because wing attacks are too quick for me. <laughs> I pride myself in that I put so much hard work and effort into being fit enough to be able to work around the body without touching the body, to be able to read the ball and attack it at the right times. And like I said, that just came from, came from experience. So at the moment, I love watching Shamira Sterling. I just think she's the most phenomenal defender in the world at the moment. And nothing will stop that woman. Like nothing scares her. She comes out and attacks the ball. I definitely wasn't half as athletic as what she is. And so the fact that she's still so young and green um, and can still get better actually scares me because she's already, yeah, over here in the Super Netball, um, you know, the top defender by far. So to see her to continue to develop and grow, um, I'm, you know, kind of happy she wasn't around when I was because she would have taken on my limelight. <laughs> never, never. Uh, just briefly, Tamsin, you had a little look at, at that um, Netball World Cup final between Australia and New Zealand and, and the through court defence. Yeah, I just wanted to highlight a bit of the difference between Australia and, and New Zealand defensively. And actually, if you look at these first two clips, the Aussie centre pass here, they, they take it and keep the players up. But it's this bit that's quite interesting. In this end third, they become a lot tighter on. So you see Watson and Jamie Lee Price going for the ball, going for it quite hard, staying tight on. They get pulled out for pen. And where it's different as well, Bruce and uh, Weston in the circle, they become quite individual. They stay tight man on man. Um, I actually think Bruce is better when she's able to switch and when she's able to go and stuff. And so I think that's what I was trying to allude to. Australia's style of man-on-man -man is great if everybody's doing it all at the same time. But actually, if they're starting to loosen off a bit, it's got to strengthen Bruce. Down the other end, the Kiwis do the same thing in terms of keeping them up with the court onto the end third line. But just have a look when it goes into the end third. Langwin and Rorley come off a little bit more. So they're trying to set things up. So Paul Pooh is looking for intercepts. She's coming fly out. When they drop back into circle, they go back onto more of a double. And uh, Pooh and uh, Watson are switching a lot more. It's, it's, it's very different. So it's just as it moves into that back end of that end third. And I think that's where the different styles are. Both have pros, both have cons. Totally depends about the unit you've got. I think Aussies, when they've got a full man on mark, are so difficult to play against, but they don't necessarily intercept as much ball. They force you into errors. New Zealand now are very much going back to their off marking where they're trying to win ball off you all the time. So, yeah, moving forward, I think the teams that are going to be successful are the ones that can go between the both. But you've got to have a set of skill of players to be able to do that because it's tough. Do you see that set skill of players now with, with Australia and Shani and other, see, other teams that are coming through that you think they're getting it right? Yeah, I think it all comes into trust of each other out there on the netball court. And Tans is completely right. You can shut down players as much as you want. But from my point of view, yeah, shut down outside of that circle. Like, I do not want to see a wing attack with an eye line to the circle at any point in time. But when you get to that circle or within that goal third, if you're on the body, you're showing them where to put the ball. So you need to be off the body to confuse the space, to jump on either side, to tempt them to throw somewhere, which is what Tamsin's just said around what New Zealand have been doing so well. And I think they're definitely doing it best um, at the moment because they have gone back to their old ways, which were so hard 
um, to attack against to be able to find that space to go to. Once you know where they're going, it's easy because you, but you need to be able to see the patterns, which is hard. But yeah, with Australia at the moment, I feel like they're not trusting each other. So by staying one-on-one, not seeing each other in the circle makes it easier for the attackers because they can confuse them in that space. So they're going to be able, they're going to need to do a lot more work together to be able to trust themselves, um, to know where the other one is. And it just comes with time and practice at the end of the day, because they just don't get, but nor do the countries, but they just don't get enough time together. And so, yeah, I would agree that that's uh, definitely an area that needs improvement. Hashtag off the court for your thoughts on anything that you've heard, seen, or might want to see over the coming weeks here on Off the Court. Tamsin, time for your drill. What are we doing this week? Well, trying to be Charlie Layton. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> have, have a look. <laughs> a little ambitious, and we're um, channeling Charlie. So the key about Charlie is that she was great tight on the body, but she was even better off the body, and she was able to come through the fly. Yes, she used her speed effectively. Um, which was key, but I want to see how you can improve that stuff. So the first thing we're going to do is just look at our fast feet. You can improve this just by practice. So you're going to be starting on the spot and it's just going to be tapping out to the four angles of the cones. It's really important you get your angles and you're going to see why as you go along. So you can mix it up. You don't have to do a pattern, but just get practicing your fast feet, keeping your body upright. Then we're going to add in the ball and think about the movement. So we're going to do two this side to start off with. You're going to be led as the ball goes. Up and watch for the little steps. I'm going to be hitting the cone before I go. Oh. <laughs> Still got it. Then we're going to go to the other side, so it's going to be the other footwork. So hit the cone and go, and then it'll be hitting the back cone. Make oh. stretch. <laughs> and got there. And then of course, the trusty lamp is back. This is our wonderful goal shooter. So we're just going to extend that cone out here. Get rid of that one, extend this one here. So we're just going to play one side. So being tight on, the problem is when you come round to the ball, you often get caught in for contact and you come round flat, the same when you come in behind. This little step off is going to give you the angle to come through. So you're going to be waiting there, and as I go, go! Bump, and it's coming through for instep. So you can let that go a little bit earlier this time. So I'm there, yeah! And you come right through. And it's the same coming through the back. So we're starting off the shooter, yeah! Bump! And you come around and look how much cleaner space it gives you to come around the shooter rather than bump into there. I think I'm done. <laughs> Shani Layton then, our guest on Off the Court this week. A few questions, as you'll understand, coming in for you, Shani. Sadie wants to know something about rebound positioning and movement for the shooter, not taking the shot would be amazing. Any tips from you, Shani? Yes, well, Mr. Rob Wright, one of probably the best coaches that I ever had, always said to me, Shani, they're either going to pass or miss. So you (laughs) never want to think that the shooter that that ball is going in because if you just kind of watch it go up and over and you don't get into position quick enough and you let that attacker off, then you're not going to be able to get the rebound. So in your head, when you're defending that three feet over the ball, you're thinking they're going to, they're going to pass it. And once it's gone up for the shot, you're going and blocking hard straight away, not to allow them to get in, cover off their space. But you're not keeping your feet still because then they can run around you. You're moving in front of them so that they can't get around you. And then if it goes through, it goes through. Um, but, yeah, whenever you're defending over the shot, always think they're going to pass or miss, and that will always help you get into position ready. And he would be so, like, if we ever missed a rebound, he would just rip our head off being like, what did you think was going to happen? Did you think it was going to go in? I- I think um, I think he took that off watching me play goal attack, pass or miss. <laughs> <laughs> shuffle shot, shuffle shot. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Sadie, for your question. Uh, this, quite interesting, I've only seen this this week. I love that Shamira Sterling retweeted it herself, uh, but it's Draft Central's list of top 25 international young guns. Quick look through the list. At 25, Latanya Wilson, who we've seen being brilliant of, of late. Uh, Sophie Drakeford-Lewis in there for England. And then up towards that top five, Kim Jenner, Maya Wilson, Fran Williams, Ziggy Berger and Shamira Sterling at number one. Uh, quick thoughts on this, you two. Mine, initially, just to wind things up, Fran Williams, third in that list, Tam's in. And yeah, yes. not necessarily starting for England at the moment. No, but um, if you talk about captain potential, she's definitely got that 
is that in a in our locker for moving forward? I think look at the shooters for me, Grace Nwaki. Hearing loads about her from New Zealand, I'm probably going to get shot for pronouncing her name like that, so I'll learn it quickly. Don't worry. Um, and Cara Conan um, in Australia. I think New Zealand and Aussie have both got to start bringing new shooters through. Keep your eye on those two. Standouts for you, Shani. For me, um, I think she was close to the top 10, but just keep an eye out for Kate Eddy. So she's well, just come back to the Vixen. She had, was injured with the Swifts last year, but um, she's a real hard worker. She does read the play and can go out and get those intercepts. So keep an eye out for her. And up the very top, um, Matilda Garrett as well. She's a defender that's been coming through the ranks for a few years now. But, um, you know, I'm hoping to see her continue to develop and, and climb up that list. But I love seeing uh, my old store mate from when I came over to the UK, Ziggy Berger, number oh, yeah. two. She must be having a killer season over there. Oh, she absolutely is. She's, she's credited Sam Bird and, and the work that the coaches have done on her just in such a short space of time. But it's working for South Africa too when we saw them, them play England in the, in the series when she finally got on court. Yeah, she's been shooting some 100... She, was it first Super League game? She was 100% terms in. She's certainly yeah. been high, hasn't she? She's a fan's favourite over here. And um, Pauls were sitting top of the table after round three, weren't they? So she's doing something right. A good move for her, I think. Yeah. All right. Yeah, it's more amazing. Awful. It just shows... Oh, sorry. It just yeah, shows... Yeah, will um, be. <laughs> Whose show is this? Whose show is this? <laughs> it's the Shawnee show. That's what we all want. That's what the crowd want. Yeah, go on. We'll get the theme tune going between now and the end. I was just going to show you the social media that's come in. This is Jenny Woods, New Zealand commentator, commentating on her sunflowers. Quite a level of excitement. And I can tell you, we've got away to a little bit of controversy. There is a protest over the colour of the sunflowers. Some saying they are too close to the green and gold of Australia. We have scientists <laughs> on the case now seeing if they can develop a black one. So stay with us. We'll be back with day two. This is one for you all to try at home. Ooh. Oh, I've seen this one going around. Yeah, I might give it a crap. You can have a go at this. It gets, it's a bit in a minute that gets complicated. Yeah, no, see, I don't like, I reckon I've got this in my locker. My problem is... Watch the hands. Hold on. The start. I'm building the anticipation. Here you go. Oh! <laughs> Oh, that is tricky. I don't know if yeah, they can do that. I mean, with the, the other great version we've seen of this is Camilla Buchanan, who has actually challenged uh, myself and you, Tamsin, to do it. So we should do yeah. it and then challenge you, Shani. But this is the bit that worries me. Uh, Why? Uh, the bit at the start and the bit at the end. I'm not sure we've got as much swag as Sasha and Camilla. <laughs> oh, 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 hang on. Hang on. Oh, Talk for yourself. Get our best outfits. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, all of these bits. Uh, yeah. Pretty tough. Thank you as well to everyone that's been in touch with their various netball videos, their skills. I know I've seen some of, of yours that have been sharing over in Australia. Some really good ones for kids as well at the moment. The clap catch, uh, which is right up. This is about my level. I can do this. Yeah. <laughs> One of the dance moves that are put in, Don't in take between yourself in that much. Yeah, Mighty Netball, thank you for getting in touch with that. And finally, the Alternative Super League Round 1. So we've been running this over here in the UK. The tea bag Challenge, trying to get it in the cup. I don't think I would have got one of these. And none of that's happening. Mainly because I'd have just put it straight in the cup, had the cup of tea and the biscuits as well. Uh, that's nearly it from us, Shani. So you off to try and do that challenge that's been set by the Corbyn sisters? Yep. Yeah, I will do that tomorrow. I'm about to head off to bed, guys. It's not enough. <laughs> so, um, I will do that tomorrow for you when I wake up in my best outfit. But, no, nah, great work on the show. Like, it's just great that you're keeping everyone involved. And I always miss the UK, so do more of them so I can join in more. Hey, we're, we're going to be coming cooking with Shani. Um, we're going to develop nicknames, the theme. Can you play a mu musical instrument? Uh not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Day 72. It'll all be about the yeah. musical instruments. We'll have you all playing. Uh, Tamsin, any final words from you? Uh, yeah, Shani, start on the recorder. Easy. No, 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 no. no. Yeah. Neighbours don't want to hear the recorder. <laughs> uh, Shani, I don't know if you've seen, had a chance to watch last week, given how busy your schedule is at the moment, but we had Peace Proscovia on and she left us with some words of wisdom. Do you have, not to put you under any pressure, <laughs> <laughs> any words of wisdom? to leave the netballing world with? I do. Look, it's just been Easter and I hate running out of Easter eggs. So just put some in a cupboard so next month you can still eat some Easter eggs. Oh. I mean, that's never going to work in my house. But yeah, yeah. If you can be an athlete like Shani, store away those eggs. 
not going to happen. No. Shani <laughs> Layton, you're a hero. Tamsin Greenway and Casey Jacks, you're both heroes too. Thank you to everyone who's got involved with the show. Hashtag off the court. Big wave goodbye uh, in not an awkward fashion. <laughs> Bye. 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 <laughs> Yeah, who'd think they were both international netballers at one time, eh? Sky Sports. Feel it all.